Good day, everyone. Great weekend to everyone here. Thanks for joining this edition of Media Marks Weather. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Great to have you here with me. We're going to look at whether we're going to see an elevation snowstorm here or if everybody is going to see a bit of snowfall here. We're looking at an interior snow potential event here across parts of interior northeast parts of the Ohio Valley and New England. We'll get into all the details on who is likely to see the most snowfall out of this storm. Let's get into it. And comparing the GFS and the European model, I'll show you in detail what's going to be happening with our snowfall across the northeast, whether it's just going to be elevation dependent or if everybody is about to see some accumulating snow. So starting off with our HRRR feature radar here, take a look and then we'll transition to the GFS and the European model. There's the low pressure as we head throughout Saturday here. Going to bring some showers and thunderstorm action here across the Florida Panhandle all the way up to the Carolinas. You can see the low pressure forming right over and moving over Nashville here. That's moving into eastern Kentucky. That's drawing a lot of warm air here up on the eastern side. Thankfully, storms are weakening here across Florida, but look at up here across parts of Ohio and Pennsylvania. It is going to start as rain. This is 1 a.m. on early Sunday morning. Now, look what starts to happen as we get heavier precipitation moves in. You start to see evidence of that snowfall, especially in the higher elevations across northern Pennsylvania, the southern tier, and downstate New York here. Now, look at the northwest side here towards northwest Ohio, Michigan, and Indiana, also changing to some heavy wet snow in these areas. Now, watch this. As we continue in time, look what starts to happen 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and 9 a.m. This is where we start to see that cold high that we have to the north over Quebec really start to exert its influence along with the heavier precipitation. We're going to start to see especially higher elevations see that burst to heavier snow. Valley locations will be the last ones to change over to that heavy wet snow. Here on the northwest side, look at that. Northwest Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan continuing to get that heavy wet snow. Parts of north central Pennsylvania would not be surprised too if some of the higher elevations see above that six inch mark, with some of these heavier banding of the snowfall. So, this will be some pretty hefty, you know, precipitation totals coming into parts of New York and Pennsylvania, northwest Ohio here. Cleveland, you're still teetering on rain. This is by noon on Sunday. You know, it's definitely elevation dependent here across Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio. And Western New England here. Look at this. So as we head towards 2 p.m., 3 p.m., all the way, let me just back this up to 5 p.m. This is where we start to see the cold air, the heavier precipitation really start to take effect here. So definitely if you're, say, north of this line, you're definitely going to see uh, things start to consolidate and change over to a heavy wet snow. Uh, valley locations will, you know, flip back and forth, mix with rain at times. Cleveland, you should start to change over to heavy wet snow just around sunset or just after sunset here. And, you know, as we continue in time, that consolidates towards 9 p.m. Here's our future radar. Looking pretty interesting here. The burst of heavier snow getting into parts of the southern tier, northern Poconos, Catskills, and this part of New England here as well. So, yeah, Binghamton, Scranton on eastward here. Definitely watch out during this time frame. This will probably be where your highest snowfall accumulations, especially the higher elevations, continue. Um, valleys one to three inches below 1,000 feet. Very slushy, though. And then those hilltops, three to six inches. And then up to 1,800 feet. That's where you stand the best chance of seeing those six-inch plus. This is 2 a.m. on Monday morning. It's actually, we're still having a hard time getting the back edge of the you know the snowfall through the I-81 corridor. So it's wanting to hang on a bit longer. This is 994 millibar by this time. So this low might end up strengthening a bit faster. And if that happens, this snowfall across this area might end up being a little bit heavier, especially on those elevation areas. It might end up switching in the valleys quicker. So this something it's a trend we're going to have to keep an eye on here. But look at that, 4 a.m., Boston, it's going to be very critical. 7 a.m., it looks like some of the bursts of heavier snow are still affecting you. And look at this. We still have the back edge of the precipitation through the Catskills, Poconos, getting some wet snowflakes and then some lake enhancement behind uh, from Cleveland on to Buffalo and Erie. All right, so as we take a look at our GFS model, and then I'll show you the European model here. Let's just back this up. There it is. So 10 p.m., we're just going to go. There are seven... Yeah, let's back this up here. So this is 7 p.m. on Saturday evening. You can see the low pressure, mostly rain until we get to 7 a.m. 
on Sunday morning. There it is, that snow on the northwest side and snow starting to, especially the ele- you know, the higher elevations here across the northeast, interior northeast here. I hate to say it, most of New Jersey staying rain during this event as well as Long Island might be on the tail end of this system. You might start to switch over to some wet snow, but really not much accumulation. The thing that's affecting eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, I know many of my viewers from here have said, these little pressures that come up this direction, you definitely usually start as rain, and that's that's what's happening here. Northern edges and northwest side, that's where you're going to see the heavier wet snow, especially very elevation dependent. The GFS is kind of going a little bit further to the north here than some of our mesoscale models, uh, so that's pretty interesting trend here. So as we get through... There's 7 p.m. Let's just back that up just a hair. There's 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon and 7 p.m. Sunday evening. So the burst of heavier snow moving through northeast Pennsylvania, upstate New York, into parts of New England. And as we continue to go in time here, this is 1 a.m. on Monday morning. So the GFS is a little bit quicker than our mesoscale models with shutting off this precipitation. But look at this. It's holding it on here in Cape Cod, Nova Scotia areas. So this is something we might be looking at, especially if this low pressure strengthens a little bit faster than originally thought. We could be looking at some more snow here across southeastern New England. Definitely something to keep an eye on. And as we go out in time, you can see our next system, just a very weak clipper system moving through. And it makes a curious exit off the coastline here come mid uh, to late week here. So that's what we're looking at. All right, so if we take a look at our European model, there is our low pressure there uh, late afternoon across you know the Nashville area Saturday. And there it is, moving up 4 a.m. Sunday morning. You can see across southern Ohio, dragging all this moisture northward here. Strengthening quite nicely, but you know it will be transferring its energy here to the coastline. This is 4 p.m. on Sunday, so you can see where the heaviest precipitation is really breaking out here, and it's this area that we're you know most you know concerned about, especially those higher elevations. Valley areas will start to change from rain to a mixture of rain and snow over to snow on the backside. Now 998 millibars. This is by 7 p.m. on Sunday evening, and look how this thing strengthens. Yeah. This is 4 a.m. on Monday morning. So what you have going on here, especially across this part of New England, definitely got to keep an eye on this. If this strengthens quicker, you could end up with heavier snowfall totals, uh, to say the least here. So this is really strengthening, kind of moving out to sea and does clip parts of southern Nova Scotia later Monday uh, as well. But, you know, behind this, it looks pretty quiet. We do have that weak system there, that weak clipper type system that kind of tries to go coastal, but it's not going to affect, you know, North Carolina with this. It's just too late. And then we get that unsettled weather next weekend. Look at this. There's that trough that's kicking in that's going to send a series of low pressure systems southward here, almost like uh, clipper type systems that try to go coastal on us, but they'll be too far east to really affect uh, much of eastern New England. Now, this is a curious feature as we get towards February 4th. This is a big system that could be developing here across the southern plains, something we'll have to really keep an eye on here because this stands the chance of transferring energy to the coast and to the northern side of this. We may have just enough cold air uh, to produce snow and look how it does try to go coastal on us by February 5th, 982 millibars. If this verifies, not to put too much into this, but could we have snow, accumulating snow here across parts of the Carolinas, Virginia, and Delmarva? Definitely something to keep an eye on here as we go out in time. All right, so our European run here, uh, take a look at this. I showed you this briefly at the beginning of the video. Look at this. So what's going on here is it's very elevation dependent. It looks like the valleys mostly, even northern Ohio is getting in on it, maybe a half an inch to up to an inch of slushy accumulation. But it's mainly here across the twin tiers of New York, Pennsylvania, Poconos, Catskills, uh, part of the Hudson Valley, heading on into parts of New Central uh, New England here. That's where we're going to see, especially above, you know, that 1,200, 13, 1,400 feet mark here. That's where we'll see the accumulating snow, two to five inches, locally higher to six inches plus, especially above that 1,400 foot level. Uh, mostly the valley locations below 1,000 feet will see about an inch or two slushy accumulations, locally higher to three inches. And some of this, especially at the onset, there will be rainfall mixing in, especially people along the southern part of this accumulation path. So 
your forecast, you're probably reading it. It's you know, There's going to be some rain mixing in. That's going to cut the totals down, obviously, especially in lower elevations. But here it is. This is the GFS looking a lot more like the European model this morning. It has been pushing uh, precipitation levels. There we go. Uh, up a bit as we go in time uh, to the, further to the north here. So we've been pushing more towards New York State. Still the higher elevations of central Pennsylvania still think there's a possibility those areas above 1,400 feet getting upwards of 6 inch plus. So going to be interesting here. It's de definitely very elevation dependent, and I think that's going to be you know the big story. Look at over here, though. The GFS putting a lot of snow here towards northwest Ohio, eastern Michigan, upwards of 4 to 6 inches. And then Cleveland area, more like an inch or two over to Erie as well. But look at here, the southern tier of New York, northern tier of Pennsylvania over towards central New England. Those areas, one to two inches in the valleys, maybe upwards of three. And then we get upwards towards three to six inches above that 1,200 foot level. Above 14, 1,500 feet, that's where we could see the six inch plus. So looking really interesting here. All right, so the HRRR future radar, it is a bit the axis of heaviest snowfall is a bit further to the south here across northern Pennsylvania. And then in New England, it's a bit further north here into Massachusetts, southern uh, New Hampshire and Vermont. So this is an interesting trend here on the HRRR model, giving most of the valley locations. You can really see it here on the higher resolution. Most valley locations an inch or two in these areas of north central Pennsylvania, southern tier of New York, Catskills, Poconos, and then over in the mountains of parts of New England as well, especially northwest of Boston here. That's where you stand the chance of seeing that three to six inches above those higher elevation peaks above 1200 feet and then above 1400 feet that's where we're seeing those accumulations that could approach six inches or maybe even locally higher so this is what we're looking at the models are finally consolidating on us here definitely very elevation dependent event here valley locations could mix in with rain at times all right so taking a look at our damn three kilometer here our latest run so yeah, it's actually disagreeing with the, you know, the HRRR mesoscale model. The, the axis of heavier precipitation is further to the north, and that can be confirmed uh, by the some of the other synoptic models as well. The trend has been to push this a bit further to the north into upstate New York, uh, basically north, you know, of Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area, uh, Poughkeepsie, these areas, especially up towards... Uh, say the southern tier of New York, Binghamton, Albany region, especially right in between these two areas, the Catskills. Yeah, that's where we could be seeing some of these higher elevations get upwards of six inch plus six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches. Uh, the valley locations, as I said, one to two inches locally higher to three inches, especially below a thousand feet here. So if we take a look at the mesoscale profiles on the temperature here, you can see what's going on here. This is Saturday, by the way. We warm up into the 40s most areas. It's only northern New England that's stuck in the 30s and even some 20s here. Now look at we go overnight into Saturday night. Here it is early Sunday morning. You can see these temperatures have kind of been bumping up a bit here into the mid 30s. Uh, so initially this precipitation is going to be falling as rainfall. Now look at as we head throughout the day. That column of air begins to cool. This is just right around 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon, so we'll have precipitation continuing across this area, and then the temperatures start to take a nosedive here. You can see some areas getting down into the low 30s, especially ele higher elevations, and look how that just takes over as we head into Sunday evening and Sunday night. That's where we're going to see you know, most of the snowfall accumulations. If we get into Monday morning, look at this. Most areas are at or just below 32 degrees here. So the temperature profile here on our NAM 3 kilometer, you can see there it is Saturday into Sunday. The NAM is just slightly cooler here. Now let's go throughout the day. This is early morning, right around 7, 8, 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. You can see the NAM has been trending colder here. So that's the difference between our HRRR NAM 3 kilometer model here. 33 by like noon here in Binghamton and Albany in areas... Higher elevations around them will likely be 32 or below, you can see here. As we head throughout the afternoon hours, look how fast the cooling takes over. So if this system does end up strengthening, you know, a little bit stronger here, this would actually, to the northwest, to the low here, produce higher snowfall, you know, rates, higher rates of precipitation, which would help the column bear from above cool down to the surface. So that's what we're going to watch for. Still think there's a general one to three inches in the valleys, three to six inches on the hilltops, and then highest hilltops above 1,800 feet. We're looking at that six inch plus range in these areas. 
So nationally here in North America, here is your snowfall totals. This is on the NAM 3 kilometer or to our trusty European model here. You can see there is basically into the northeast through Tuesday here. That's about the only show in town we have going on and switching over to the GFS here. There it is. We can go further out here on our GFS. There it is in the northeast looking pretty impressive there. Uh, and as we continue throughout the week, we can just pile on more snow later on next weekend here into northern New York and New England. But you can see there is some inroads here to try to get some snow further south. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. And as we get towards mid-February, this is where things become a little bit more interesting uh, as more of these southern storms get some cold air deeper into the south. Now, as we get into the northeast here, take a look at this. Yeah, the northern edge of this, this goes to show you up to an inch along this northern edge, you know the snowfall that is falling. You're not going to get that 10 in, you know, one inch equals 10 inches of snow, one inch of rain, 10 inch. But look at this. This goes to show you how wet and heavy the snow is going to be. So if you do have to shovel, if this does accumulate on your pavement, especially if you're at higher elevations, exercise extreme caution. And here we go, John, sending in some photos here from Tom Shuttlebash Park here. Look at this. It's a frozen lake. So the cold air has been making it pretty far south into, you know, southern New York State here. Look at this. Still got some water flowing there, but you can see evidence there around the edges, some icicles. So the water has been freezing up as well in the falls here. And look at that. Yeah. Nice day to get out there and enjoy. Even the overcast days this time of year are nice. Get out there and enjoy that nice, crisp clean cold air look at that nice captures there you can see the frozen lake just freezing over here those are some nice captures john thanks for sending those in looks very very beautiful and tranquil so our upper air pattern here on our european model you see our weekend storm pivoting to the east coast here sunday and monday that is a thing of the past and as we head towards midweek that ridge starts to build in with a trough here across the southern states all right, as we take a look at the medium range CFS climate model here, there it is. We head into February. It is going to be a little bit unsettled here across the U.S. East Coast. However, it's usually the low pressures that form on the southern and eastern side of these troughs. So this might be a little bit too far east to get any major East Coast snowstorms. And that'll be a thing of the memory come the middle part of February here. However, look what starts to happen. I know many of you thought that come mid to late February, we'd have a better chance of East Coast snowstorms, but things are changing. This tends to happen with the models. Ridging is averaging out here across the East Coast with troughs out west. So as we head towards the end of the month, that's where we start to see the evidence that we might start to see a big East Coast trough. But by this point, we are practically almost the last day of February here. All right, so going north of the border here, Canada, what is going on up here? Well, I'll tell you what, unless you live on the west coast of Canada or parts of extreme southeastern Canada like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, these areas seeing the most activity. Most areas of Canada are extremely clear, cold, and quiet here. So as we go out in time, we have a little weak clipper here as we head late in the weekend towards Sunday across Ontario. It's not going to amount to much. These clippers look pretty far to the north, actually. But look at this high pressure building in eastern Canada. We continue to have that moisture belt here into western Canada. That's going to just continue out here. Another weak clipper towards February 1st here. But look at that. Yeah, it doesn't start to get into deeper moisture until it enters the United States. So high pressure is going to be the name of the game up here into Canada. And you can see we're, there, the exception towards February 5th here, where you could get some sort of coastal into southeast Canada. Definitely got to keep an eye on that. Could bring some significant snow and wind here uh, to eastern and southeastern provinces. There really is not a whole heck of a lot going on across most of Canada up here. I got plenty more weather for you in just a moment, but take a look at my affiliate. Do you want some awesome maps? Check this out. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, 
And you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code MEDIAMARK, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. All right, so taking a look at our temperature-wise here, it's Sunday, our really uh, urgent day here for snow in the northeast. It, it does look very marginal, but it'll be dependent on where the heaviest snow uh, falls as well, you know, precipitation bringing down the cold layer of air from above. So, you know, mid 30 seems like a popular number to support that heavy, wet snow, as well as Monday here on the backside of the system. Now, look at Texas, South Florida into the 60s here. This is where we're start going to start to see the warmth build, as I said, would happen. You know, the big ridge taking over. You know, you do start to see New England. There is a reinforcing shot into the 20s here on Tuesday. Uh, but look at the Ohio Valley building into the 40s pretty much all week here. And look at this, Texas and Florida, Miami, mid-70s here, South Texas as well. We're going to watch this warmth just build throughout the week. Look, at we're getting into the mid-40s here in the parts of the Ohio Valley. This cold air in northern New England is retreating. And as we head towards, here it is, Friday, look what's going on. I said this would happen eventually. We're going to go through a couple weeks of warming here. And look at this. This blasted furnace from Texas and Florida is going to be heading north. Here's the extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Being into Scranton's upper Susquehanna River Valley. Look at this. Saturday night, the precipitation moves in. Mostly rain. And then we'll transition to snow from the higher hilltops above 1,000 feet down to the valley floors by Sunday afternoon. So we're looking at about a slushy up to an inch or two in the valleys below 1,000 feet on below. And up to above 1,000 feet, we could be seeing that 2 to 5 inch heavy wet slushy accumulation above 1,800 feet upwards of 6 inches plus. The snow looks to shut off about 1 to 2 a.m. on Sunday night into early Monday morning. So... It looks like Monday will be mostly snow free. They'll be clearing the roads and whatnot. And then look at the rest of the week here. We're looking at 30s to near 40. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also at Weather Northeastern, also at Hurricane Northeastern, and also at Susquehanna Weather. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. And you can visit me at MediaMark.com. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to check out my winter weather outlook for 2023-24. A link in the description down below as well as my affiliate, Trilogy Maps.